I know that there are people who boycott the Grammys and, you know, want nothing to do with the Grammys and everyone has their opinions. I'm just here for the fashions. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everybody in between, we are back and we are here for the fashions. My name is Malcolm Sores. I upload here on YouTube every Friday. Fashion, style, beauty, entertainment, pop culture, conversation, whatever you want. If you're a regular here, you already know what time it is. We talked about all of the fashions from the Golden Globes. We discussed the Critics' Choice Awards. But on today, the Grammys, the moment. You guys know the drill. We're going to talk about the hits. We're going to talk about the misses. We're going to talk about the opportunities for improvement. But I've taken the week. I've deliberated. I've been able to go back, recalibrate, understand everything that was happening. We're actually going to do it a little differently. I'm going to go from a best dressed pick to a worst dressed pick. So we're going to alternate. We're just going to address everybody in the room. Okay, so we're starting with the creme de la creme, as always. The pedestal. The queen of all living things. She's the most winning female artist in Grammy history. It's Beyonce. Everything that Beyonce wears on the red carpet is not automatically my favorite. That may be a shocker. It may be hard to believe. But when it comes to fashion, she's not always my leading pick. But at the Grammys, she actually showed up and showed out. She started with this Schiaparelli number. Elsa Schiaparelli was actually known as a somewhat rival to Coco Chanel. Her fashion house goes back decades. And right now, they have a creative director named Daniel Roseberry, who was actually what we like to call a silver fox. He's a very handsome, very attractive man, but that's besides the point. He actually designed looks that you might have seen before in the press, including Lady Gaga's inauguration look. Everything. The structure of this dress is the highlight. The fact that her waist is still that tiny. The ruching in the leather too, it just accentuates everything that needs to be accentuated. The fact that the gloves connect with the dress, this is really high fashion. It almost gives me like a Terry Mugler type of look. You gotta give what needs to be given. But Beyonce actually took it up a whole nother notch for her after party look. She's wearing custom Burberry. I, I don't even know where to start. This is giving me metallic, outer space, Arabian princess vibes. There's a turban involved. There's a mesh fishnet veil. The amount of crystals, we can't even begin to count. And to be honest, I think it's one of my favorite Beyonce red carpet looks ever. She's been working with Zarina Akers, who's an incredible stylist, and they absolutely won this entire evening. I bet you wouldn't guess that this dress was Burberry, but this is what happens when you have things made custom. Yeah, we are the original, just like that, boo. custom. It's probably really annoying to walk in, but who cares? Who needs to walk when you're wearing custom Burberry like this? This is a first pick. This is couture, high fashion, custom. She don't need no upgrade here. She's been upgraded. This is the upgrade. This is my first worst dressed pick, and we're just starting with Noah Cyrus. The design house is very much about extravagance, about volume, taking it to the next level. Not just adding one ruffle, adding an entire ruffled adornment to the whole ensemble. It's another one of those pieces that really belongs in like a fashion museum. I don't want to see it on Noah Cyrus. It's not working for me. The color is clashing with her skin tone. I know what she's going for, so I can acknowledge that. It didn't deliver for me. But I mean, who am I? Good for her her for taking the risk and stepping out on faith, but you know what? Faith without works is dead. Let me know in the comments how you felt about this first worst dressed pick, because for me, it might not have worked, but for you, it could have worked, and that's fine. Now, going back to our best dressed list, this was a hit. Dua Lipa wearing Atelier Versace. Dua Lipa is killing the Versace game lately. She obviously has a fantastic relationship with Donatella, and I am here for that. Because this crystal mesh Swarovski butterfly creation is absolutely everything. Dua Lipa is the hot young girl on the pop scene. Y'all better recognize and start acknowledging what's happening here. The Grammys last weekend were really showing you who these kids are out here TikToking and bopping to. I think I said in my Golden Globes video, like, if you want that leg to be out, 
it better be out. It turns out that this is actually a reference to a spring 1999 Versace collection and era. And I actually saw this pattern on a few starlets, Naomi Campbell, the one and only, okay? Christina Aguilera. So this butterfly motif was actually like a really cool retro callback. And we love that from a brand like Versace because they're nothing short of iconic. So Dua Lipa, yes. Now we're going to go to another iconic Italian fashion house. However, this is our next worst dressed pick. Mickey Guyton wearing Valentino. We love Valentino, but we do not love this Valentino. This young lady is actually a country music singer. This was not the moment. It's very classic Valentino and it's probably beautiful on a runway. It just doesn't complement her shape. There's opportunity for improvement here. Throw her hair up. Throw some beautiful tulips and flowers in the hair and just make it this like floral extravaganza type of moment. Like if you're gonna go for it, go for it. So now our third best dressed pick from the Grammys is a gentleman. Well, I don't know if he's a gentleman personally, but it's a dude, it's a guy, it's a man. This is the baby wearing Dolce and Gabbana. I love a man in a good suit, but a jacquard moment? It's ornate, it's elaborate, it's colorful. The hat actually complements the suit perfectly. The runway look is beautiful as well, but I'm glad that they didn't add the coat and didn't do the exact runway look. Sometimes that's not always the best option to go with. That coat is actually fabulous though. Oh my God, it's like a jacquard on the outside and quilted on the inside. That's actually a moment. You definitely have to have the confidence to wear something like this. And he's giving us the confidence. The baby is a fine chocolate man. Gosh, even down to the green loafers. I feel like everything is very cohesive here. This is a very strong menswear look. I'm here for this. You know, I love Lizzo. I really do. Love her music. Love the whole moment. I just couldn't get with the Balmain moment. You know, I love me some Olivier. I think he's one of the most talented creative directors in the industry and one of the most snatched faces I have ever seen in my entire life. But Lizzo and Balmain was just not stunning for me. Both of these dresses are from the pre-fall 2021 collection. To be honest, I'm not even a big fan of these dresses in the actual collection. This is also giving me somewhat of like a retro throwback, but it's just a little too wasted at prom night for me. This could have been made into a longer gown and been absolutely beautiful because I think she does that strapless sweetheart gown effect very well. Now the pink, to be completely 100% honest, to me is a disaster. There's way too much going on. It's just like a jigsaw puzzle that I can't and refuse to put together. Great music, amazing personality. Love that she doesn't even care what people think about what she's wearing. I'm sure she don't care about what I think about what she's wearing because we love Balmain. They have fabulous pieces, but where were they for this? Okay, so we're back to the best dress side. This is Janae Aiku. She's wearing Mansouri. It was actually only giving me an Ariana Grande reference when she wore that gray Jean-Baptiste Valli couture gown at the Grammys. Everything about this dress just calls me back to that dress. If you have a train attached to your gown, that means that you're ready to present some drama. You know that you're going to be walking around with a train to worry about for the entire evening. So I appreciate that. That means that you're committed to the look, the tool, the fabric. It gives us pretty, pretty princess. And you know what? Somebody had to do it. Yeah, Ariana's not at the Grammys. Who's going to give us pretty, pretty princess? Well, ironically, <laughs> Janae is with Ariana's old man on the red carpet, Big Sean. That's none of my business, though. Thank you. You're nominated for Album of the Year. Yeah, that's fantastic. Show up looking like something. Janae Aiko did a fabulous job. The country artists are just not winning tonight. My next worst dressed pick from the Grammys is Marin Morris wearing Dolce & Gabbana. This was not okay. First of all, the dress looks like it's literally about to fall off of her. Why was it not taken in at the waist? I think the intention was to be glamorous and to give, you know, kind of like Mariah Carey, this is my crib, like an easy, luxurious type of moment, you know, just like slip it on and go. Slip it off 
and change into something else. Somebody please go take her dress in. Like if I saw this on the carpet, I would just like, somebody give her one of these. You know what I mean? Like when I saw this, I really wanted to help her. Like I just wanted to be a helping hand. She's a gorgeous girl, absolutely stunning. This dress is not stunning. I don't know, comment down below and let me know what you think about the satin moment. Okay, so for my last and final best dressed pick, I actually had to do some soul searching, but I didn't want to be biased in my decision because Taylor Swift in Oscar de la Renta was actually the floral moment that we didn't know we actually needed. Groundbreaking. You know why I'm giving this to her? She understood what worked for her. Give her the floral applique. Give her recent Oscar de la Renta. Make sure it's as short as we can get it because her legs are literally insurable. Can you imagine? I think she insured her legs. That might have been a rumor, but I don't care. It's a fabulous rumor. I hope there's a rumor about me someday that I have an insurance policy out just on my legs. If the shoes were wrong, I might have not given her this slot, but the shoes were just perfect. A fabulous pink Christian Louboutin that ties at the ankle. It complements the texture of the applique. There's even a little bell sleeve at the cuff. If you see, I really didn't want to give this to her, but I have to give it to her. This is stunning. Like, this is gorgeous. This last worst dress pick. <laughs> We're going to discuss this briefly and then we're going to move on from it because Doja Cat in Roberto Cavalli. I can't begin to imagine what the thought process was. The mullet was just wrong. And I saw a sketch of the design of this dress. I believe Fausto Puglisi is the designer for Roberto Cavalli now. There was a long red hair wig type of moment. We need to switch out the lace fronts here, first of all. The dress is what I need to address. I I'm getting sexy NASCAR driver on the top, overage cougar on the bottom. I have no idea what's happening here. I did some digging into the background of this Roberto Cavalli inspiration, and I actually found the Fall 2003 collection had a lot of these color tones, some of these silhouettes, the textures. I saw the green feathers, leather motorcycle inspiration, but I feel as if looking back on this type of dress is only going to cause regret and shame and embarrassment. It looks like she's very confident. She's sticking her tongue out. She got her hand on her hip. I still can't understand it. And I'm sitting here trying to understand it and I just can't. This is absurd. This is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, so I have two honorable mentions that I do want to point out and highlight. Megan Thee Stallion looked absolutely beautiful. This orange Dolce & Gabbana number was a fabulous selection. It's not that it was safe, it's just that I've seen it, you know? I don't think I've actually seen her look better on a red carpet. This was a fabulous look. The entire ensemble was absolutely gorgeous. I also want to highlight Harry Styles wearing Gucci because Harry is just giving you the gender neutrality of it all and I am here for that. Yeah, throw that boa around your neck. This is definitely giving me Alessandro Michelle for Gucci, that 70s kind of vintage inspiration. And it works. I'm very much here for that. Harry, call me. <laughs> that wraps up my fashion recap from the Grammys last weekend. Let me know in the comments, as always, if you guys agree, if you disagree, who are your best dress picks. Make sure you check out all of my other fashion videos. We're always talking about red carpets. We talk about trends. We talk about style. We talk about shopping. But we got a little bit of everything. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you gave this video a thumbs up before you leave. Make sure you're being your own definition of beautiful. And until the next video, until the next experience, and until the next moment.